Good morning, everybody. I'm Brother Joe, and welcome to Morning Prayer on behalf of the Episcopal Church of the Atonement in the Edgewater neighborhood of Chicago, Illinois, this Monday in the 16th week after Pentecost. Um, today, we're going to be commemorating Edward Bouvier Pusey. Um, for now, we're going to ask everybody to mute their microphones. It's other, up to you whether or not you want to mute your video. It's our tradition here um, to light candles to signify God, God's presence. You can do that at home. I'm going to do that now, right now. If, if you don't have a prayer book at home, uh, we follow the structure of prayer of the Brotherhood of St. Gregory Daly's Office app. You can follow along um, on your phone or on your tablet or on your computer by um, in the URL line going, putting dailyoffice.app. Um, there's some settings once you get to the Daily Office app that you'll be interested in. If you um, either touch or click on the upper right-hand corner of your device, it will take you to the settings page and two important settings for us is are the um you'll want to set the the psalms you have to kind of scroll down to find stuff um set the the psalms to the 30-day psalm cycle and you'll want to set the lord's prayer to traditional language a third setting that is that is kind of helpful too is to, on the general thanksgiving if you are using a prayer book at home i'm going to give you some page numbers now and i'm going to give you some page numbers along the way Morning prayer begins on page 80 of the prayer book. The Psalms today are Psalms 90, 91, and 92, and they start on page 717 of the prayer book. The canticles today are canticles 9 and 19. Canticle 9 is on page 86 of the prayer book, and canticle 19 is on page 94 of the prayer book. At the end, the general thanksgiving is on page 100 and, 101. And now I'm going to uh, read the hag hagiography for um, Edward Bouvier QC. Um, important to the church, and I think kind of important to Atonementites, you know, since we are Anglo Catholic. The revival of high church teachings and practices in the Anglican communion, known as the Oxford Movement, found its acknowledged leader in Edward Bouvier, Bouvier QC or near Oxford on August 22nd, 1800, Pusey spent all of his scholarly life in that university as Regius Professor of Hebrew and Canon of Christ Church. At the end of 1833, he joined John Kebbell and John Henry Newman in the producing the Tracks for Our Times, which gave the, the Oxford movement its popular name, Tractarianism. <laughs> Excuse me. His most influential activity, however, was his preaching. Catholic in contact, content, evangelical in his zeal for souls, but to many of his more influential contemporaries, it seemed dangerously innovative. A sermon preached before the university in 1843 on the Holy Eucharist, a comfort to the penitent, was condemned without his being given an opportunity to, de to defend it, and he himself was suspended from, from preaching for two years, a judgment he bore patiently. His principles were thus brought before the public and, atten public, and attention was drawn to the doctrine of the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist. The revival of private confession in the Anglican communion may be dated from another university sermon, on the entire absolution of the penitent. When John Henry Newman was received into the Roman Catholic Church in 1845, Pusey's adherence to the Church of England kept many other Anglicans from following, and he continued to defend the teachings and practices of the Oxford move movement as a legitimate, legitimate expression of the Church of England. After the death of his wife in 1839, Pusey devoted much of his family fortune to the establishment of churches for the poor and much of his time and care to the revival of monasticism. His own daughter, Lucy, had longed to serve the church as a religious sister. While she died too young for her dream to be realized, Pusey dedicated himself to reviving 
the religious life for women so that other women would be able to respond to that sense of call, even though his, even though his own daughter could not. In 1845, he established the first Anglican sisterhood since the Reformation. One I got since the Reformation. It was at this community's convent, Ascot Priory in Berkshire, that Pusey died on September 16, 1882. His body was brought back to Christchurch and buried in the cathedral nave. Pusey House, a house of studies founded after his death, perpetuates his name at Oxford University. So we'll take a moment here. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Come, let us adore him. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our maker for he is our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Come, let us adore him. Together, let us pray Psalms 90, 90, 90, 91, and 92, found on page 717 of the prayer book. Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to another. Before the mountains were brought forth, or the land and the earth were born, from age to age you are God. You turn us back to the dust and say, Go back, O child of the earth. For a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it is past, and like a watch in the night. You sweep us away like a dream. We fade suddenly, we fade away suddenly like the grass. In the morning it is green and flourishes. In the evening it is dried up and withered. For we consume away in your displeasure. We are afraid because of your wrathful indignation. Our iniquities you have set before you and our secret sins in the light of your countenance. When you are angry, all our days are gone. We bring our years to an end like a sigh. The span of our life is 70 years, perhaps in strength even 80. Yet the sum of them is but labor and sorrow, for they pass away quickly and we are gone. Who regards the power of your wrath? Who rightly fears your indignation? So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Return, O Lord, how long will you tarry? Be gracious to your servants. Satisfy us by your loving kindness in the morning. So shall we rejoice and be glad all the days of our life. Make us glad by the measure of the days that you afflicted us and the years in which we suffered adversity. Show your servants your works and your splendor to their children. May the graciousness of the Lord our God be upon us. Prosper the work of our hands, prosper our handiwork. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High abides under the shadow of the Almighty. He says to the Lord, you are my refuge and my stronghold. 
my God in whom I put my trust. He shall deliver you from the snare of the hunter and from the deadly pestilence. He shall cover you with his pinions and you shall find refuge under his wings. His faithfulness shall be a shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of any terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day. Of the plague that stalks in the darkness, nor of the sickness that lays waste at mid midday. A thousand shall fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Your eyes have only to behold to see the reward of the wicked, because you have made the Lord your refuge and the Most High your habitation. There shall no evil happen to you, neither shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. They shall bear you in their hands, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and adder. You shall trample the young lion and the serpent under your feet. Because he is bound to me in love, therefore will I, will, will I deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I am with him in trouble. I will rescue him and bring him to honor. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. It is a good thing to give thanks to the Lord and sing praises to your name, O Most High. To tell of your loving kindness in the early morning and of your faithfulness in the night season. On the psaltery and on the lyre, and to the melody of the harp. For you have made me glad by your acts, O Lord, and I shout for joy because of the works of your hands. Lord, how great are your works. Your thoughts are very deep. The dullard does not know, nor does the fool understand, that though the wicked grow like weeds and all the we understand, that though the wickeds grow like weeds and all the workers of iniquity flourish. They flourish only to be destroyed forever. But you, O Lord, are exalted forevermore. For lo, your enemies, O Lord, lo, your enemies shall perish. And all the workers of iniquity shall be scattered. But my horn you have exalted like the horns of wild bulls. I am anointed with fresh oil. My eyes also gloat over my enemies. And my ears rejoice to hear the doom of the wicked who rise up against me. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree and shall spread abroad like a cedar of Lebanon. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bear fruit in old age. They shall be green and succulent, that they may show how upright the Lord is, my rock in whom there is no fault. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. Naboth the Jezreelite had a vineyard in Jezreel beside the palace of King Ahab of Samaria. And Ahab said to Naboth, Give me your vineyard so that I may have it for a vegetable garden, because it is near my house, and I will give you a better vineyard for it. Or, if it seems good to you, I will give you its value in money. But Naboth said to Ahab, 
The Lord forbid, forbid that I should give you my ancestral inheritance. Ahab went home resentful and sullen because of what Naboth the Jezreelite had said to him, for he had said, I will not give you my ancestral inheritance. He lay down on his bed, turned away his face, and would not eat. His wife Jezebel came to him and said, Why are you so depressed that you will not eat? He said to her, Because I spoke to Naboth the Jezreelite and said to him, Give me your vineyard for money, or else, if you prefer, I will give you another vineyard for it. But he answered, I will not give you my vineyard. His wife Jezebel said to him, Do you now govern Israel? Get up, eat some food, and be cheerful. I will give you the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite. So she wrote letters in Ahab's name and sealed them with a seal. She sent letters to the elders and the nobles who lived with Naboth in his city. She wrote in the letters, Proclaim a fast and seat Naboth at the head of the assembly, seat two scoundrels opposite him, and have them bring a charge against him, saying, You have cursed God and the king. Then take him out and stone him to death. The men of, this, of his city, the elders and the nobles who lived in the city, did as Jezebel had had sent word to them. Just as it was written in the letters that she had sent to them, they proclaimed a fast and seated Naboth at the head of the assembly. The two scoundrels came in and sat opposite him, and the scoundrels brought a charge against Naboth in the presence of the people, saying, Naboth cursed God and the king. So they took him outside the city and stoned him to death. Then they sent to, to Jezebel, saying, Naboth has been stoned. He is dead. As soon as Jezebel heard that Naboth had been stoned and was dead, Jezebel said to Ahab, Go take possession of the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite, which he refused to give you for money, for Naboth is not alive but dead. As soon as Ahab heard that Naboth was dead, Ahab set out to go down to the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite to take possession of it. Here ends the reading. Together, let us pray Canticle 9, the first song of Isaiah, found on page 86 of the prayer book. Canticle 9 on page 86. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my savior. Therefore you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation, and on that day you shall say, Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things, and this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion. Ring out your joy, for the great one in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Paul, called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God and to our brother Sosthenes, to the church of God that is in Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints together with all those who are who in every place call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus for in every way you have been enriched in him in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Now I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you be, be in agreement that and there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and the same purpose. For it has been reported to me by Chloe's people that, the, that there are many quarrels among you. 
my brothers and sisters. What I mean is that each of you says, I belong to Paul, or I belong to Apollos, or I belong to Cephas, or I belong to Christ. Has Christ been divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you except Crispus and Gaius, so that no one can say that you are baptized in my name. I did baptize also the house of, of Stephanus. Beyond that, I do not know whether I baptized anyone else. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to proclaim the gospel, and not with eloquent wisdom, so that the cross of Christ might not be emptied in of its power. For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Here ends the reading. Together, let us pray Canticle 19, the Song of the Redeemed, found on page 94 of the prayer book. Canticle 19, found on page 94. O ruler of the universe, Lord God, great deeds are they that you have done, surpassing human understanding. Your ways are ways of righteousness and truth, O king of all the ages. Who can fail to do you homage, Lord, and sing the praises of your name? For you only are the Holy One. All nations will draw near and fall down before you, because your just and holy works have been revealed. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Together let us say the Apostles' Creed, found on page 96 of the prayer book, followed by the Lord's Prayer. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Together, let us pray Suffrages A, found on page 97 of the prayer book. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way no be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Grant, O God, that in all time of our testing, we may know your presence and obey your will, that following the example of your servant, Edward Bouvier Pusey, we may with integrity and courage accomplish what you give us to do and endure what you give us to bear through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. O God, the King Eternal, whose light the divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into the morning, drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep your law and guide our feet into the way of peace, that having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 
Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross that everyone might come with, within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. Next are the prayers for the Episcopal Church of the Atonement um, in Chicago and beyond for the week of September 17th. You can add your own intentions either silently or aloud at home, or you can add them to the comments feed of this Google Meet. And you get there by clicking or touching on, or if you're on a computer, just on the lower right-hand corner, just touching the bubble down there. And if I will try to see your um, intention and read it if we have any. We pray for the healing and comfort of those for whom we now offer our prayers. We pray for the sick, for Phyllis Graham, Mark, Eli, Destiny, Kay, Ron B, Jerry C, Brad, Mary, Killian, Dennis, Mary, Tom R, Ed, Thomas, a priest, Susan T, former President Carter, Ken, a deacon, Mary, Michael, the presiding bishop, Manny, Chris, Nancy, Jeff, Michael N, Carlos, Verrill, Roman, Mary Kay, Leslie, Jackie, Don C, Jose, Patricia, Roy, Bernard, Eddie, Donald, John, Tim, Jim a priest, Mary a priest, Connie, John, and all with COVID-19. We pray for those needing special prayers, the families of those hospitalized or in nursing homes, especially Elizabeth, for peace of mind, for the Hein and Pomerink families, for all who mourn, especially the Farah family, Mother Joy, Father Cristobal and their families, for all victims of violence and crime, for all refugees and migrants, for peace, especially in Ukraine, Sudan, Ethiopia, Israel, Gaza, the West Bank, Syria, Yemen, Myanmar, Niger, and for the work of Care for Friends and Care for Real. We pray for all healthcare workers, especially Joseph Basil, Jackie, Gary, Will, Choi, Erica K, Larry, Kieran, Lee, Kari, Anthony, William, Eric, Lisa, Thomas, and Emily. For all families and children in this city and state, for all expected parents, and for all prisoners, especially Oscar Roy, Jorge, and Mingo. We pray for members of our military services on active duty, for Andre, Ricky, Owen, Max, Celeste, and Nate. We pray for Paula, our bishop, Charles, our rector, Dave and Amanda, our wardens, and for the members of our vestry. We give thanksgiving for the consecration of Carrie Schofield Broadbent as coadjutor bishop of Maryland. Thanksgiving for the ordination to the priesthood, uh, priesthood of Brother Luis Enrique Hernandez Rivas, um, CFC. We give thanksgiving this week for birthday for the birthdays of Anne Stranahan, Patricia Shaw, Father John David Van Doren, Lucy Satcher Dunlap, Rick Vallone, Tanya Evanoff, Julia Willems, Belinda Blunt Williams. Thanksgiving for the anniversaries of van, anniversaries of Stephen Briggs and Gloria Mo, Mojike, Steve, Steve Britt and Michael Waltz, Harry and Aaron Watson. We pray for the departed, for Mimi Farah, Ronaldo Cristobal, father of Robert, Robert Cristobal, James Stevenson, the brother of Mother Joy Rogers, Kristen Graham, the thousands killed in the flooding in Libya, all victims of gun violence, and all who have died of COVID-19, and at the anniversaries of their deaths, deaths of Kathleen Francetic Davis, Carl Sambo Jr., William Johnson, Father William Johnson, James Boyd, Elizabeth Klein, Lila Tupper, Father Thomas Lyons, Charlene Vallone, Jessica Quinn Lucas, Anna Mae Hobart, Clara Smith, and Watson Stewart. And we have a prayer for Ukraine. Lord of all the earth, be present with the people of Ukraine at this time of danger, fear, and conflict. Grant that wise and peaceable counsels may yet prevail and give to all suffering nations the freedom they desire and deserve. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May these and all our, our intercessions be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Together, let us pray the general thanksgiving found on page 101 of the prayer book. Almighty God, 
Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. This concludes morning prayer. Um, you can join us for morning prayer every morning here on uh, Google Meet at 8.30 a.m. every day of the week. On Tuesdays, we have um, evening prayer. Also on Google Meet, you can get to either morning prayer or our Tuesday evening prayer by going through the Atonement website and just looking on the right-hand column and then clicking on the, the link. Daily Mass at Atonement is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday at 7.30 a.m. Um, Thursday at noon, Wednesday, there's an additional 6.30, 6 .30 p.m. Mass. There's a Healing Mass Saturday at 10 a.m., Sunday Masses, um, Low Mass at 8 a.m., Sung Mass at 9 a.m., and a Solemn High Mass at 11 a.m. You'll want to mark your calendars. The first even song um, of the season with the St. Cecilia Choir will be on Wednesday, October 4th, and that's going to be at 7 p.m. on um, at the Episcopal Church of the Atonement. So everybody, have a great week. Be kind and be safe.